have the back of the switch cleaned up the best I can get it. We do have antenna wires attached to the switch and so it makes it a little challenging to just get right up in there and scrub it really good. Got the back side, got the board down here. I had to get a uh, transfer a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol in this section here to help lubricate it. I will be coming back with um, proper electrical contact cleaner to clean that all up. Now next thing we're going to do is flip the board over and clean the back side of the board. Here's the uh, two swabs I got off of this section. Also cleaned the top of this transformer. It was all icky. And I just wiped this one down just barely. And the reason why I only did just barely is because I didn't want to lose this ink that was stamped right up here. Okay, let's flip it and clean the back side. The way how we're going to clean the, the back side here to get off the uh, the flux, the factory flux that, that's on here. We're going to use a little brush. I've got 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol and then we're going to use some Kim wipes. Just get your brush all saturated in alcohol. Wipe it on. Try to be careful of the string. We don't want to get the string saturated and then a chance of it deteriorating, breaking down. Otherwise, I'll keep my big hand in your way so you can't see very well. And you can see right away how lighter that board is already starting to get. stick but my little grabber thing here get the wires out of the way best I can get that board all nice and saturated On old things, you generally try to keep the patina. However, back side of the board, no, we don't want to keep the patina. Okay. So now we're going to take our our Kim wipe, put it over the board. Get your brush all wet. And the reason we're doing this is first we got the uh, solder flux wet and this and, and that will break it down. And what we're doing here is we're actually absorbing, picking up the flux. That way we're just not like with a dirty mop just smearing it all over the board and it does no good. And I do apologize that my hands in the way. And just get that thing all nice and saturated. I've hit that cord a few times. Okay. Move it over a little bit. Get this back side of the board.
And you probably already see that the chem wipe is already getting yellow. All right, about that. I'm trying to get the camera angled so you could see better. That way you have a better overview of what it is I'm doing other than just a nice close-up shot of my hand. Okay. Let's see what that did for us. Hopefully you can see the yellow on that. Looks like uh, nicotine. That kind of yellow. And there's the board. We'll take another chem wipe and we'll just blot the board. Pick up the uh, residue so it's not all sloshing about. In case you're wondering where do you get chem wipes, well you can buy them off of eBay. Just do a search for chem tech. Chem tech. Or chem wipes. Either should get you to where you want. Basically I believe they're uh, medical type equipment. But they are used in the electronic industry just the same. Okay, so we got our nice yellow rag. And now our nice clean board. Have the face removed from the radio. This does answer a question whether or not this radio had illuminated dial, and it does. I've not seen the bulb illuminate. Of course, I've only used it off of 6 volt power pack or feeding it in uh, the bench power supply through the power, uh, the battery pack source. So I don't know if that illuminates when it's connected to the car or not. So I will take some voltage and tap into the uh, leads to see if I, I can get that to illuminate. If not, then we'll change that out. I have only one bulb like that. And I'm not sure if it's the same voltage. But if not, I do have some LEDs, maybe we'll just swap it out for a modern LED. But we'll see how that happens, what happens there when we check that out. And another thing is, once I separated the faceplate from the, the radio itself, I have to tell you this. This faceplate weighs more than that radio combined. That is a solid piece of metal right there. That is amazing. There's the part numbers on this faceplate. And we'll wipe down the back. Remove any dust and debris off the back. And then we'll come in here and we'll clean this all up. Here in this angle, we could definitely see the light bulb and you have a better look at uh, the needle 
the paint falling off the needle. So we'll clean that all up, run down, get some fingernail polish, and take care of that. The back is just simply what looks like electrical tape. And this is nothing other than a different look, different angle at both the needle, which you could see a lot, lot uh, better in this angle, how icky that is, and then the light bulb. I think we got it lubricated good enough. I cannot find a uh, a uh, input port or opening for the on-off portion of the switch, but that part never really gave any issues. Everything else is lubricated. I'm going to pause the video here, and then I'm going to go and pick up some uh, fingernail polish so we can move on to that. By doing that, that's also going to allow time for the uh, lubrication to drip out or dry or whatever it's going to do without trying to get you know splatter on the face or anything like that albeit I do I do plan on cleaning that up I just didn't want to um, I don't know mix oils have an oil fire I don't know so we're gonna let that drip do its thing I'm gonna go get the uh, need paint for that put that all together Put it on a um, signal generator, check for the frequency, make sure everything is tuned up properly. We'll double check the switch is lubricated properly and put it together and detail it. Catch you in the next frame. Welcome back. Well, since the last time I saw you, I can't remember what I did. I think I lubricated up the, the um, switches or the switch and the volume control cleaned up the board a little bit, plugged it in, turned it on, and it's like, hey, this sounds like crap. What's going on? After dorking with it for a little bit, giving the, uh, oh, the electrical cleaner and the deoxid time to, to dry up and do its thing, and after about an hour of that, it's like, well, this still sounds like crap. What's going on? Poking around, I notice on the back of that switch up underneath, I apparently got too excited when I was in there cleaning and knocked two of the antenna wires off of the switch without realizing it. Yes, they are fine, fine wires as most of you know. Two of them. Luckily, they were connected to the same post. And luckily, I re was able to refer back to my pictures that I take. And that's something that, you know, when you get more involved in just a couple of items, that's something you definitely want to do. Detailed video or detailed photos. That way in scenarios like this you could definitely refer to it, find the problem or find where things went and with any luck fix the problem. What you're looking at here in the middle of your screen is the needle. Oh, once I soldered those wires back on the radio came to life just uh, fantastic. It's about five o'clock in the evening now and stations are, are very plentiful. Even within the last two hours, very impressive. Anyway, as I was stating, what you're looking at in front of your screen now is the needle. This is the first coat that I painted. The dollar store did not have the orange I wanted or an orangish red that you're accustomed to seeing older dials. They had fluorescent orange and it's like, I don't think so, homie. I settled on hooker red. And that's what you got there, hooker red. Clean the needle, wasn't uh, too much into uh, involved in cleaning. It was a self-cleaning needle. Most of the paint fell off on its own during the process of moving the radio about. Uh, so I just um, came up here to the top of the needle and knocked off the loose stuff. I wasn't too concerned about it showing through the window because it's not gonna show through the window. No big rip. That 
is the first coat. The LED, I'm going to go ahead, uh, or the uh, light on the radio, I traced it back uh, to the board and it only works when it's plugged into 12 volts through the uh, car chassis. So let me rephrase that. It only works when it's plugged into the car chassis and that could be 6 volts through 12 volts. I thought I had a, another incandescent bulb to put in in the hole there. Unfortunately, I no find. So without getting into adding a convoluted second circuitry just to run that LED, keep it at a, a constant voltage, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that dead, silent, until I could come up, uh, until I could find those light bulbs. I, I know in the past I've searched for them on eBay and man, practically hard to find, if at all. Well, it was hard because I didn't buy any. So maybe if you know a good outlet to buy a, a batch of them, let me know. I would like to do that. Maybe different values, you know, 3 volt, 6 volt, 12 volt, whatever me would like. That is about it in a clamshell. We'll let the first coat dry, which in fact, it's dry. So bear witness, homies, to adding a second coat of Hooker Red. You know, they're nice and heavy. There. Now we're going to let Hooker Red coat number two dry. Let me move this needle down so it don't, uh, paint don't dry in place. As you can see, I have the face assembly remounted. Can't really see it too swell in this lighting, but the pointer is there. It looks really good. We'll do a close up at the end of the video so you can see it. Better illumination, but it definitely does look a lot better than what it was when we started. What we need to do now is to see how close that dial is in comparison to the actual frequency that it's spewing out. How are we going to do that, you wonder? Well, I wonder too. No, I'm goofy. We have this digital multimeter that has built-in frequency counter. It's a lot easier to throw this one down on the bench than the bench frequency counter. So we're gonna run with this. Authorities aren't sure why a tour bus returning to Los Angeles from a casino trip this morning plowed into the back of a semi-truck. That sounds pretty good, huh? I, I'm really impressed with this radio so far. So, the vintage signal generator in the background is how we're going to confirm that this is on frequency. Have the probe of the uh, signal generator on the frequency counter and all we're going to do is just drape it near don't even have to be on or just has to be near hopefully someplace where it'll stay up by itself okay this is working ducky whoops Okay. And so what we're going to do, signal generator, we're going to increase the gain. And by doing so, we want to nullify this frequency. Now I'm on 1380. And that's pretty doggone close in the window where we're at. So I'm going to increase the, uh, the gain here and you should hear it.
and that's with the gain cranked all the way up. And you can see 1380 is where we're at. Now let's scroll down. Let me kill this. Next thing we're going to do is scroll down to the bottom frequency. Should be around 650. Six fifty is a frequency that's known by me established, and so that's why we're going to target that. All right, so that should be about six fifty. I'm going to adjust this to read six fifty. Why am I at? I turn the gain up, that's why. Let's go ahead, we're getting close. And you should hear this nullify if I do have that indeed on 650. Close enough. Yes, it'd be nice to have one of those fancy fangled digital things. So, let's go ahead and make sure we are indeed at about 650 on this. Okay, that looks to be about 650. So I'm going to say that frequency wise, it's tuned up. All right, the product is now finished. Completely assembled, polished, lubed, all that good stuff. Radio sounds great. I did a uh, front end alignment uh, by ear. Did that off camera and I got to tell you that honestly wasn't very far off from where it was already set show you real quick here is a view of the radio at this angle and there's the radio squished in you could definitely see the new needle color it's not orange but it's not bad I think Hooker Red works out just fine. You're probably saying to yourself, but Jack, enough dribble drabble, which is kind of a weird thing, especially if your name ain't Jack. How does it sound? Well, check it out. We're running off the old C batteries that the radio was in, and I forgot to measure how much, uh, how much juice they had. The time right now is 12, 19 a.m. Please make a note of that. That way you know DX conditions. Pretty much everyone has agreed upon is that these were intelligent people and they were, in, in a sense, past their, their shared floor, if you want to put it like that, is they were idealistic. And Let me go to the top of the band. We're almost there.
So oh. tell me, what do you think about this? Oh, no, thank you. No, I mean, the law is absolutely absurd, and it brings, uh, you know, all kinds of feelings, of course. Um, by the people you interviewed, you know, these breakthroughs we had and this enlightenment we had, and I'm trying to think, what, what help me understand it. MyPillow.com He's never been better. He's never been better supported. And with Martin Trip. Muy de veras que acerca de las faltas de la vida pasada, las rechazo, las aborrezco. on Sunday. Interest gate, which is not subject to the situation at all. And so uh, the state of California is right. to go in the first half. Ryan Fitzpatrick would lead the Jets on three scoring drives. Some more extensive American Heart Association, some Netflix, 
General Mills, PepsiCo, Kraft Heinz, Subway, and Panera. All have found ways to reduce level footage in the products without various substances. We'll see whether they can sell on As you can hear, it's a um, really impressive radio. Uh, my worktop bench speaker has a pair of these. These are Radio Shack speakers. Nothing snazzy, but they are vintage from uh, 70s. 8 ohm, uh, I think 5 or 10 watts, nothing major, but they sound pretty doggone awesome. Well, this will conclude this video. Hope you enjoyed the overview, the review, the repair is what I meant to say, not review, and whatever all else we did to this radio. I'm extremely pleased with how it turned out. Now. It's onward and awkward to the next project. Bye.